Working with Microsoft Word to format your document in MLA can be challenging. So this video is going to give you some tips and tricks, show you how to format your document in Word, and also show you how to keep those changes permanently so that way anytime you open up Word, the default template is gonna open up as an MLA formatted document, which will save you time in the future. So let's get started. So here I have opened a new blank document in Microsoft Word. And as you can see already, when you open up Microsoft Word for the first time, it already has some standard templates applied. And one is the font. It has it set as Calibri 11. This is the default for Microsoft Word. Now for us in MLA, we need to change this because in MLA, the default is Times New Roman 12 point. Now, the easiest way you could do that is to change it from the drop down menu. Choose Times New Roman and choose 12 point font. The problem is, is that we want it to always be Times New Roman 12 point because if we open it up and we open up a header, there's a chance that it, the header might be still in Calibri because that's the default. So we want to change that. The easiest way to do that, and even though I'm on a, Mac, on a Mac, this applies for Windows too, you can go to Format, and you can go to Font, and you'll see this font box pop up. And it just lets us know what font we have right now, Times New Roman 12 point font, which is exactly what we want. And we want this all the time though. So what I'm gonna do is hit Default, and then all documents based on the normal template. When I hit OK, what this will do is it will tell Microsoft Word that I always want the default to be Times New Roman 12 point font. So say you close this document and open up a new document, the new document will be automatically opened into tw Times New Roman 12 point font. So we hit OK. The next thing I want to look for is the margins. In MLA, we want our margins one inch around the paper. So again, I'm going to go back to Format, and I'm going to go to Document. And as you can see, luckily, uh, Microsoft Word has already set the default to one inch top, bottom, left, and right, with the gutter at zero. This is exactly what we, what we want. It's already the default, so we don't need to change anything. So I'm just going to hit OK. Now this is where a little bit of the trick comes in, which is the spacing of the text. In MLA, we require double spacing. And the easiest way to change that is to come to here, this little box with the line spacing, and hit 2.0, and then that will give us double spacing. The problem is, is that there's a hidden default in Microsoft Word that when you change it to double spacing, there's still extra spacing that gets applied on top of that. And I'm gonna show you what that looks like. So if we go back up to format, and we go to paragraph, you can see the indentation is at left zero and right zero, which means it's all the way over to the left or all the way over to the right. It's not adding any extra indentation, which is perfect. We have our line spacing at double, which is what we want. The problem is here, where it says spacing, before zero point and after 10 points. Now, for some reason, Microsoft has added this as a default. The problem with this is that even though we've set it as double spacing, because it says after 10 points, what happens is that when you hit the return or enter button, it adds an additional 10 points of space after you hit return. And we don't want that extra space because then it's not double spaced. So the fix to this is to take it back down to zero. So before zero point, after zero point, line spacing is that double. Now this, and you should see a little example here, is exactly what we want. Now once again, I want this to always be the case because I'm always writing my papers in MLA format. So I'm gonna set it as the default. So set this default, all documents based on the normal template, and hit OK. And now, we have a perfectly formatted document. So anytime I open up Microsoft Word, it's going to open up with these settings applied 
which is exactly what I want. Okay, now that we have the document formatted, now we want to actually start formatting the paper itself. I'd like to start with the header because it can be the most difficult. And I think the easiest way to go is to go to insert. And then you'll see this drop down box here, header. And you'll see a number of templates here. I would advise against using these templates mostly because they have their own formatting. And sometimes that formatting will include uh, font. And so we don't want to change the font, right? We don't want anything to be different than what we've already formatted. So you can just go to edit header and you'll see this little header box opens up here. The easier way to do it is I'm just going to double click in the regular area here. If anytime I want to change the header or fix it, you can just double click in the header area and it'll pop up right for you. You can see it also has popped up all of these um, little formatting options for your header. Now the one we want is the page number because in MLA we want our last name and the page number on each page and we want that number to change so page 1 to page 2 to page 3 etc. If you just type the number 1 and you don't use a format what will happen is that when you go to the next page it'll just repeat because that's what happens the header repeats whatever is in it so it'll just keep saying 1 1 1 so the best way is we're going to use this little formatting option here for page number. I'm going to hit page number. And it's going to give me some options. And we want it on the right hand side of the page. Show number on the first page. Yes, I would like that. Hit OK. And you'll see a little number one here has popped up. And it's in Times New Roman, which is perfect. So I need to add my last name to it. So more space one because my last name is Moore and double click out and there we go now I have my header now I want to create the heading to my paper which includes important information about me and the class I'm in and the assignment so the first thing we want here is to have the heading justified to the left as you can see here I already have my cursor in the right space so I'm going to type in my name. My name is Sean Moore. And then I'm going to type in my professor's name. Uh, you can say Professor Harris, or better yet, Dr. Harris. And then we have the class ENC 1101. And I'm going to say I'm in section 139 and then the date and this is another one of those where you have some options now in MLA we always write the date formally the same way which is we do the day first space and then the month space and then the year there are no commas it's day month and year we always write dates in that format. Now the date that we put on the heading is going to be not the date today but the date the assignment is due. So let's say I have an assignment due on October 18th. So 18 October 2019. And there you go. And now I have my heading. Now you should notice something odd. Can you guess what it is? That's right, that's not double spaced. That's more than double spaced. Now I did this on purpose to show you. I'm gonna highlight this and I'm gonna go back up into format, into paragraphs. And uh-oh, look what happened. This is what happens when you don't change that line spacing before and after. So you can see that even though it's double spaced, every time I hit return to go down to the next line, it's adding an additional 10 points of space. Now we need to get rid of that. So I'm gonna hit okay and now look, now that is double spaced. Right now it looks exactly like it's supposed to. So I wanted you to see what it looks like so that way if you start to see your paper look like that, 
where the double spacing looks a little odd or big, then you know exactly what the problem is. All right, so we have our information in the heading. The one last thing I'll show you, if you'd like, which is you can actually insert the date and time automatically by going to insert, date and time, and you'll see a number of options here, and they do have an option for art style. And you can hit it to update automatically. And this is useful, I think, for students who work on papers day to day. The only problem is you want to make sure that you have the right date when you're submitting it, right? So which means you'll have to open up the document on the day it's due. So I don't particularly like to do this, but if you'd like to have an automatic, then that's an option for you. Okay, now that we have our heading, we need a title. And so I'm going to hit center justified so that way I can go and put in my seriously awesome title. And here we go. Now we, we pretty much have everything set and ready to go um, to actually start writing. We have the header, the heading, and the title. So now I'm going to add in some text just so you can see what the rest of this is going to look like. So this is just some example text and I'm going to copy and paste it over here. I'm going to make sure I'm back to the left justification and I've added in some text. Now, part of the reason I've done this is because uh, some of you who might be like me, I, I, I don't like to write in Word directly. Uh, I like to write notes and ideas and then I put it into Word later, and which is totally fine. You just need to make sure that you're then making the format apply to MLA and changing anything that might be um, wrong with the text that you're copying over. So as you can see, this is just a bunch of Latin, right? It's, a, it's just a placeholder for text. So I'm going to ignore the, the red lines, but we've got some problems, right? One is that we don't have any indentations, um, we're not in double spacing, and the font is not Times New Roman 12 point. So what we can do is we can highlight that text, we can go to Times New Roman, it's already in 12 point font, we can go to paragraph and check. You can see all of this is fine, it just needs to be double spaced. Okay. And then I'm going to hit tab and indent each paragraph. But notice something happened here, which is even though this looks fine, this amount of space in between the paragraphs is way too much, which means something must have happened. So let's go back into format, into paragraph. And as you can see, it's not the what it was before. It's not the 10 point. It isn't anything actually in Word. It's from the text that I copied over. It has copied over on its own some extra spacing. So I need to get rid of that. And now we have text that is properly formatted. And we can always double check by going up into paragraph. And yep, everything looks good. So this is kind of the danger of copying over text, right? Is that you copy over formatting from whatever you wrote the text in in the first place. So it's better to write in Microsoft Word, but if you do write outside of Microsoft Word and you copy over, then you need to make sure that you are fixing the formatting and that everything is lined up how we want it. Okay, so let's move on to the final piece, which is the Works Cited page. So I'm done with my text. I've written my essay, my very short, brief Latin essay. And now I want the works cited. The works cited is going to be on a separate page. It's going to be formatted on its own. We're going to have a title, so we're going to center it. Now, I have 
more than one work that I've cited in this um, essay. And actually, you can see it here. You see Schult 37, uh, Regis, right? These parenthetical citations here indicate that I've used, and here's another one, Schult 37, indicate that I have used two sources. So I need to make sure that those sources are properly cited in my paper and in my work cited. So because I have more than one works that I cite, I have a works cited. Now if I only cite one work, and that might be the case if you have a very small essay, then it's a work cited because literally I've cited one work. But since I have more than one, I have a works cited. So I'm going to hit enter, I'm going to go down. And I'm going to go left justified again. Now that title doesn't get anything, it, no bold, no underlining, nothing like that. It's just Times New Roman 12 point, it should look like everything else. Now I need to add in my citations. And this is where your little handbook is going to come in handy, right? All right, so now I'm going to add in my citations. And I've already been working on these. So I'm just going to add them in here. And there we go. So you can see I have the two citations. Now I've already kind of started to do these. It's already in alphabetical order. So you can see Regis comes before Schulte, which is perfect. Now if you need to, if you have more, if you're working in Word and you have multiple citations, and you've been adding them in there as you go, which is a good strategy. They may not be in alphabetical order and you need to put them in alphabetical order. So how do you do that easily without moving everything around and losing some of your formatting? Well, the fastest way and the best way is to highlight them. And you see Word has this little option here. You'll see this little A to Z with an arrow. This is a sorting and I want to sort of the paragraphs and I want to sort them by the text. And I want to sort ascending, which will go um, from A to Z. And then hit OK. And you can see what it did is it took some of that formatting away. Right? So I had some extra spaces here and in between these formats and in between these citations. And it's taking that away because it recognizes that they shouldn't be there, which is helpful. But these, four, um, these citations are too close together. We can't read them like this. And if you have more, especially you have like 10, 12, 15, they become really difficult to tell which citation is which. So what we're going to do is we're going to change the formatting here. We're going to go to paragraph. And you can see, once again, because I've copied text over, it has copied some formatting that I don't necessarily want, which is it's copied over this right minus 5 indentation. And I don't want that. So I want it to go back to zero. The first thing I want to do is I want to make sure it's double spaced because it should be double spaced like everything else. The second thing I want is to help me as a reader see the citations and to see them clearly. What we want to do is we want to make them hanging, which means the second line and third line or any line after the first is indented a little bit so that way I can tell which citation is which. And the, there's an easy way to do this in paragraphs. It's under the special option, and you want the hanging, and you'll see it at 0.5. You can see a little example here, right? You see how the second line is indented above the first line. So I'm going to hit OK. And there we go. And so now those citations, right, are very easy to tell which is which, where one begins and where one ends. So now I have a properly formatted document. I have a properly formatted paper. I have in-text citations. I have a work cited that is in alphabetical order that has all the information that I need according to my handbook. Now, what if you're in Google Docs? Well, the good news is, is that now Google Docs can pretty much do anything Word does. So it's not really that big of a deal. And in fact, I actually prefer Google Docs over Microsoft Word. Um, I like having 
a collaborative aspect to my writing. Sometimes I work with writing partners and sometimes assignments call for Google Docs. So if you use Google Docs, it's fine. You can still do your MLA formatting here. And I'm going to show you how. There are only a few um, changes that are different from what I showed you in Microsoft Word. This will also apply to anybody who's using third-party software, um, things like OpenOffice. The, these formats and the way you do them is almost exactly the same in OpenOffice. So anything you're using, you should be able to use these tools. Okay, so the first thing, and this is the, the biggest thing that's kind of different, is that Google Docs does headers a little different. Um, you actually have to go to insert header and page number uh, and you can go to header and it will open it up but what we actually want is the header page number page number and you can see here on the right hand corner which is what we want and then it opens it up and it adds the number of my last name here and there we go now the only thing that you can't really do in Google Docs is really set the default font right and other aspects like you can in Word so you just have to make sure that you're always setting the font into Times New Roman and 12 point see but now I have my header there and it changes um, page just like it does in Word so I don't have to worry about copying that over because it used to be before that you would have to add that into Word later. Okay, so I can still do my heading. I'm just going to make sure I'm in Times New Roman, 12 point font, and then I'm going to make sure that I am in double spacing. And there we go. All right, so there's my heading. My seriously awesome title. And everything's looking good. So this is looking almost exactly like we did in Word. So this is perfect. So now I'm going to add in my text just like I did before. So I'm going to copy it over. And I'm going to add in indentations here for each paragraph and as you can see it's added the same extra text or extra space like it did before previously but this is kind of the nice things that sometimes Google Docs will remember your options and it's already put it into Times New Roman 12 point font for me but I can check by highlighting it and making sure I can also go to format paragraph and styles um, and alignment to make sure everything is set but this looks good so here I want my work cited and notice my page number has changed work cited and then I'm going to copy over my citations that I had before okay so they're in Times New Roman 12 points, so all that's fine. And now I just need to do the hanging. And this is where um, the align and indent is going to come. Because unfortunately, like um, Microsoft Word, Google Docs does not have the kind of really nice hanging option. So this is something that we're going to have to do. Um, a little bit differently. So unfortunately Google Docs doesn't have that nice hanging feature so we're gonna have to do it on our own. So what you're gonna need to do is highlight the text yourself and then make sure you have this little ruler and if you don't um, you can hit view and make sure you show ruler because what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to move this to 0.5 and you'll see it's moved everything over but now we can see there's the little triangle on the bottom and then there's a little marker on top. That top marker will grab and hold and move back to zero and now there we go. We have our hanging. And so now we have our MLA format paper in Google Docs. 
Now, you have an option in Canvas, obviously you can link to Google Docs, you can add it in there. Um, if you'd like to though, you can also download it. You can download it as a Microsoft Word document or a PDF, um, which is what you know I have my students do, which is fine. Um, so you can have uh, multiple options for downloading this and then uploading it into Canvas and all of your formatting. If you download it, all the formatting will stay the same. You won't have to worry about it. It'll look exactly like it does on the page here, which is what you want. So that would be my recommendation. So there's Google Docs. There's MLA formatting. I hope this has helped. Um, have fun and good luck formatting.